From Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh my God! Oh, here I go! Oh, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are, together again on the radio. This story from the Orange County Register. These stories piss me off. Myola Sandoval walked to the podium in the small theater at Esperanza High School with her daughter, Ashley, in her arms, moving one step closer to completing her tumultuous high school career. Two years ago, when she got pregnant, Sandoval assumed that school simply wasn't an option. Right after giving birth to Ashley... Sandoval left school for more than a month, feeling overwhelmed by the twin pressures of schoolwork and caring for an epileptic daughter. It's bad enough you're 17 and you have a baby. But she's epileptic? Oh, boy. What brought her back to school? The story goes on to ask. She said, for me to have a good life for my daughter, I need an education. And I just didn't want to fork fast food the rest of my life. (laughs) You know what I say to that? That's what you deserve to be doing after having a baby as a teenager. Working fast food the rest of your life. And tell you what, you know, if I want an extra chalupa in my bag or a couple of Cokes and some fries, we need women like you out there. Why do I want my taxpayer money making it easier for you not to serve me down the line? You kidding me? Says you're surrounded by friends and family. She received an award for her determination. Sandoval, 18, is one of 11 seniors graduating this year from something called the Cal Safe Program at Esperanza High School in Anaheim. Cal Safe, like so many acronyms here in California, stands for the California School Age Families Education Program, aiming to help teenage parents, mothers, and fathers graduate from high school by coordinating efforts to provide child care, health care, and education. Seven school districts in Orange County participate. Well, God damn it. Do you want your tax money going to this? Do you want your tax money rewarding those little sluts for getting knocked up and then providing them with child care and health care for themselves and their kids? Are you kidding me? You should be working in fast food the rest of your life, darling. You should be watching uh, barcodes going boop, boop, boop over there at the uh, Food for Less. That's what you ought to be doing. When I need my shoes shined, you, 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 you should be asking me what kind of polish I want used. That's what you deserve. That is what you deserve. As a taxpayer, I don't want to be paying to make your life easier in high school. If you can't take care of the baby, give it up for adoption. You shouldn't have been having babies anyway. And we shouldn't be paying for it, dear. 
It says here in the story, the program serves as a safety net for girls like Amanda Moreno, 17, who became pregnant in her junior year. She said, I'm not going to drop out of school just because of this. I have an opportunity to stay in school, so why not stay? Maybe you should have kept your legs closed. Maybe you should have gone on the pill, darling. Maybe you should have done something to prevent this from happening. And you wouldn't have to be on the taxpayer dole making your high school education possible. This is not our problem. You know, we need educated people, and we also need unskilled laborers like yourself. I think we should be making it possible for you to, uh, you know, to uh, have an easy life or an easier life. Oh, don't worry, we'll take care of your kid while you finish high school. Why is that our problem? It says here, critics of teen parenting programs like CalSafe say they overemphasize parenting and neglect academics. The Esperanto program, administered by the Placentia Yorba Linda Unified School District, has seemingly struck a balance, they claim in the Orange County Register. By the way, isn't the Orange County Register a libertarian publication owned by a company called Freedom Newspapers? They're like libertarian family. Why would they be in favor of this? Even in, a, in, the, in the context of a news story, why, why would they allow that? This is so not libertarian. Sandoval, who plans to study dental hygiene, took a fairly typical senior schedule, English, economics, and math, but also parenting and child care classes with Winnie Hopkins, the CalSafe teacher. You go, Winnie. CalSafe's principal goal is to ensure student graduation. From 2001 to 2004, CalSafe graduated 76% of students who were exiting the program, according to an official report to the California legislature. This year, 11 of 12 seniors in the program at Esperanza High will be getting diplomas. Hopkins, however, has even higher hopes. In recent years, she's begun to urge her students to not just graduate, but to pursue their college options. By the way, Winnie probably expects us to pay for that, too. Give them the old little teen slut scholarships to universities. You know, effing whore scholarships. The Spread Your Legs grant. <laughs> Says here, many girls in the program come from communities with few or no college graduates. College goals often seem unattainable. Hopkins said, a lot of my kids are the first of their family to graduate from high school, let alone college. Says here, statewide, CalSafe participants are overwhelmingly Hispanic females, the group least likely to attend college among white, black, and Hispanic women, according to a 2006 University of Texas study. Why don't they mention Asians in there? You know why. <laughs> Hopkins starts talking about college early and often in the school year, reminding students that they have options after graduation besides entering the workforce. Former students of Hopkins who've gone on to college often come back to talk with the girls. When Hopkins students hear from someone who was once in their situation, many start to seriously consider higher education. By the way, why don't we uh, limit our encouraging higher education to teenagers who get knocked up? How about we encourage the general population of students to be going to college? You've read some of the stories recently. There's already more women in college than men. Why aren't we encouraging everybody to go to college? Why waste your time with teenage mothers who probably will never finish anyway? Come on. Tells you the application process for higher learning can be another obstacle. Many students in the program have no one to turn to for help with their application and financial aid forms. Some also lack the basic computer skills necessary to apply. Well, maybe if you are practicing your computer skills instead of practicing your fellatio, darling... Uh, maybe you wouldn't be in this position. So Hopkins provides a computer lab in her room and a helping hand 
which, by the way, your, your helping hand is, is paying for her helping hand. A helping hand filling out forms, taking advantage of early registration opportunities, and outreach services. Again, taxpayer expense. She has students type letters to their children each month as a way to teach basic computer and writing skills. Again, if you weren't uh, so busy being a slut and uh, getting nailed, uh, you would be writing, reading, practicing, studying, learning your computer skills. You'd be doing all that. I know it's politically incorrect, but it's just true, and you can't deny it. Says here, by providing and maintaining something called a college folder for each student with financial application forms, Hopkins encourages all of her students to at least consider college I I just think this program is a huge waste of money I get pissed off hearing that it exists and I'm wondering if you agree with me Tom Likas 1-800-5800-866 nice smack on the ass so good the Tom, Tom Likas like show. show 5 800 Tom it's Jeff in San Diego on the Tom Likas show hello Hello, Tom. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Great. Good. First time caller. It's actually my first time listening, and um, I had to pull over the car and give you a call and uh, tell you what I think about your last piece on the teenage girls who have uh, made a mistake and uh, are now being bailed out by the taxpayers. Now, as I sit here, I'm trying to decipher if... What you're mad at is the program or the immoral behavior of these kids. No, it's the program. I don't want to pay for it. Okay. I don't want okay. to pay for it. And, and I'm, I'm outraged as a taxpayer who already pays a lot in taxes. That uh, part of what we're paying for is we take these little teenage sluts and we give them free uh, babysitting services and health care for their little crumb crunches that they've created. Uh, when you know, uh, for Christ's sake, uh, the schools here in Southern California could use money for like computers, books, uh, for the general population in the school. Agreed. And uh, Agreed. we've got to have some priorities here. If you want to be a little slut and go out uh, with your boyfriend and uh, get knocked up, I think that that should have a lower priority helping you than helping people who are college bound, people who show up at school every day, people who work, people who don't need babysitters for their kids. Right. Well, this right. is ridiculous. But, but, as I chew on this in a pragmatic fashion, I'm, I'm thinking as a taxpayer that also pays a lot in taxes. You know, let's face it. If if these girls drop out of school, you know, something tells me they're they might not enter the workforce at all, and they may end up collecting a check from Uncle Sam and us for the next 18 years. Well, Whereas if they are given the opportunity to go to college and perhaps better themselves, graduate from college and perhaps become the next dental hygienist, maybe they'll be able to afford to raise their children without our aid for the next 18 years. Well, you know what? I, uh, we can work on that after we work on the people in the general school population who are dropping out at an alarming rate, uh, who don't go on to college. Why aren't we helping them? Yes, I, I, that's the part I do agree with you on. I really uh, see your point there. Um, little, little teenage tarts, uh, as far as helping them out, they're low on my priority list. Right, right. But as taxpayers that uh, really don't have a lot of control on uh, as to where their tax money goes a lot of the time, um, I'm, I'm thinking, I, you know... Well, you have more control when people start speaking out about stuff like sure. this. And right. look, if, if California schools were the way they were 50 years ago, when California had the number one school system in America and huge rates of, of graduation into college and uh, incredible literacy rates and incredible uh, uh, low dropout rate, if, we, if, if our schools were like that, then we could talk about being charitable to these little tarts. Which, which begs the point, we really do need to speak out more because as the population trends move the way they're moving in California, I think we're going to see a lot more of this. So, uh, well, but the, thing, the other thing is, I think by, by offering baby care sitting services and health care services and other things to make life easier, you're encouraging more of these little sluts to go out there and get nailed because they know the school's going to pick them up dust them off 
Well, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. I, I don't know that it's at 16 and 17 years old that uh, kids that are making these mistakes are even thinking that far down the oh, line. Uh, I think uh, I think girls do. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, it was all explained to me in a photograph on the front page of the L.A. Times one day several years ago. We had a little 15-year-old slut who had her little baby with her, brought her to school, and six other, uh, you know, future teenage mothers all gathered around, all cooing, and, oh, how wonderful this is. Uh, I, you, you should not be bringing your baby to school. The baby does not belong in that school. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with that. It's not setting the greatest example. But, you know, kids are going to make mistakes, and, uh, you know, yeah, I agree. The priority list has to be rearranged a little bit, but there, I think there does. I think this program, at some level, can be a beneficial program for the taxpayer. That is, if little girls do not say, "Hey, if I get pregnant, there's no problem because they're going to take care of me." <laughs> I tend to think little girls are victims of peer pressure more than any other part of society. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number, Brianna, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. All right, so here's the deal. I was 15 when I got pregnant. I was 16 when I had my son. I am now 20 years old. My opinion on this situation is that it is a waste of taxpayer money, and it, it basically, it's... It's like if these girls that do get pregnant decide that they actually want to go to college and, and pursue their high school education, for that matter, they should be doing that on their own, not uh, not relying on a, a program that's going to hold their hand through the entire process. In my case, um, I chose to do some research and find um, a school where I could you know, take the same level of courses, not remedial courses. A lot of these high school programs are remedial courses. They're not the same level as everyone else. I chose to find a school, and I found one that was homeschooling. But it was completely, parents are left out of it. It's not the kind of homeschooling you think of. It's the kind that's a lot of it's online, a lot of it's on campus. I got my license as soon as I could, and I was over there, you know, working my behind off to get my diploma basically and once I did that I was right into college you know I didn't need a program you know even though it was available to me to go and babysit my son for me you know I did the research you know I watched my child while I did my education and I continue to do that now I work full-time and I pay for his own daycare and I don't need the government or you know these community programs to hold my hand you know it's like basically you want to do it or you don't no, I think that's a very good point. I think you make a lot of good points. And uh, now I'll bet you're a taxpayer. Now you're paying for these exactly. little slots to so start cranking them out. Exactly. Thank you, so Brianna. I just wanted to let you know. Blow me, blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up, baby. one 800 tom is our telephone number Ashley on the Tom Likas show? Hello. Hey, baby, what's going on? Not much, dear. All right, I just want to call in. I have a few points. Um, I went to high school in Las Vegas. I was in all honors classes and was never talked to about how to get financial aid and stuff like that in school. And I know that the kids in lower level classes were, but because, you know, the people in honors classes were assumed to be able to figure it out by themselves. And in a lot of schools in Vegas, they have it set up where the people that are taking child care classes actually are getting the class credit by watching these sluts classmates' kids. It's ridiculous. They're having it set up where, you know, they don't actually have to pay to watch, you know, their students' kids. They're having the other students do it. I just think it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It should not be set up that way. And then when I moved out here, now I'm working my ass off trying to save up enough money just to be in part-time school. And I look through the co college catalogs and, you know, they the only financial, like, assistance they have, they, you know, they have pages of it, you know, discounted and free books, class registration fees, you know, enrollment fees, housing, everything. Only for single mothers, you know, free bus passes, everything that they just give out to them. 
And, you know, I would like to get that kind of thing, but I don't have a kid. So I, I, no. We would be better off, and I don't like this either, but we would be better off offering scholarships to girls who don't have children. Serious, yes, exactly, because they're most likely to actually use it, follow through all the way, and, you know, end up working at a higher level. You know, so I, I know most of the girls that, you know, would get a scholarship or have these options, you know, because they were sluts in high school and decided to spread their legs and, and have a kid. You know, they're going to start going to school, but then, you know, they're going to try to find, you know, a baby daddy or whatever and have someone else take care of them. And, you know, I've, I've seen it. A few of my, you know, acquaintances back in Las Vegas did it, you know. They didn't even, most of them don't even finish high school, but, you know, I mean, it's, I think it's great that they're encouraging them to do these things, but they shouldn't just be giving it all out to them because I pay taxes too, and I don't want to be paying for them to get special treatment when, you know, I took it upon myself at a very young age to take the bus down to the Planned Parenthood, get birth control to make sure that my, me and my first boyfriend didn't have a kid. And I've, you know, been taken upon myself ever since then. And I don't have a kid by design, just like you. And I plan to never have kids. And, you know, I will have an abortion if I ever get pregnant. That's for damn sure. And because of that, I am not going to be able to get all this special treatment that those people get. I just think it's so unfair. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right about that, Ashley. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Al on the Tom Likas show. Yeah, I want to hold the Tom about the topic today. Okay, hold on. I'll see if I can find him for you, Al. Stay right there. <laughs> The Tom Like His Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. This is Al. The Tom Like His Show. Hi, uh, yeah. My name is Al. I was put on hold for the topic today about the young girls having children. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. That's totally screwed up. All right, you're still on hold. Hold on there, Al. Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Al, the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I'm still the one on hold. Oh, you're the one on hold. Yes, hold on, please. Yeah. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Al. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. How you doing, Tom? Great, Al. Tom, I, I totally agree with you. I'm a taxpayer, don't have children, did it by design over the years. And I think the first caller you had, that first guy, he's one of the main problems. He's losing his mind, want to question you about what you disagreed with. He should be wholeheartedly disagreeing with it. Because I think in this country, we start that with older women having children with all these public aid programs that taxpayers pay for, that young girls, when they see that, they automatically, you know, hey, they know about it already. And they learn from an older mother, sister, relative. So it's a, it's a you know, it's a, 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 an effect that just constantly happens. Yeah. Mom is probably 30 years old in this case. Probably so. I agree with you. You know, and I think we should do I used to be in the military. I went in Europe. I won't say what country, but the way they did it in this particular country I was in, instead of people being on public aid programs, they actually had to work. They even had them out sweeping, cleaning the streets while they were trying to find education. They did those things to help that city to more or less clean up the city where they didn't have to go ahead and spend the money to help, you know, take that burden off of taxpayers. And that helped where you didn't have as many teen pregnancies and stuff like we have here. And even older women having children without, you know, fathers and on public assistance programs. And taxpayers like us, we have to work hard, you know, because I'm paying almost a quarter of my income every year for taxes for children I don't even have. And that's not right. 
Yep, I agree with you. Thank you, Al. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Kristen on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi. Okay, so first of all, I totally agree with the fact that those programs shouldn't exist for those girls because it just enables other girls to know that if if they so choose to be careless and, you know, selfish that, you know, someone will enable them and they'll, you know, they have the peace of mind that there's something to fall back on and that, it, you know, encourages other girls to do that. I think it's absolutely insane. But I also have a question. What if, and this is just out of curiosity, not because I disagree, but what if the girls were raped? Does the theory still apply or should they just not even try anymore? I believe, I believe that rape victims deserve uh, you know, a certain amount of treatment, a certain amount of help. Rape, right. uh, rape victim is different from somebody who goes out with her boyfriend and gets knocked up. Right. So does the program cover those girls or does it, I mean, do they, I mean, what do you think? Do well, they, I know. They, I imagine it covers, rape, then you can have it I'm anymore. imagining it covers teenage mothers uh, based on the story I'm reading here. It's teenage mothers, however they became mothers. Okay. Okay. Well, I think it's ridiculous. And I, I, I mean, right, the taxpayer money and all that. I just think that is absolutely, I mean, for all the things that we could be helping students and with, I mean, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Kristen, thank you for the call. Who's it? Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 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 Bam, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bam, bam, bam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Likas. It's the Tom Likas Show. show from Hollywood at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. We are talking about this wonderful little program to help out all the teenage sluts out there. Oh, yes. We're uh, in Orange County, California, right in our own backyard here. We are uh, providing the girls uh, who got knocked up in high school with daycare, health care, other support systems. It's like, that's great. Well, why don't we provide these services like for people who don't get pregnant, people who don't have babies, people who stay in school, people who work hard? It's Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Um, I'm a Methodist minister, and I'm calling from Miami, and I truly am appalled at uh, the way that you speak about women, especially young girls that are pregnant. You really have a very social and Darwinistic outlook on life, which is part of the problem that we're facing in America today. You think so? Uh, nobody is willing to, to admit that they have feelings for other people, because that may be a weakness that other people perceive, and I really believe that underneath that very rough... Having feelings for people is not the same as giving them my hard-earned money. You know, you know, uh, Tom, if that is all there is, God, why don't we just uh, just forget about everybody? Hey, let me tell you something. If you were in a... Flood, well, if money like, isn't so important, why do uh, people uh, of uh, religious backgrounds spend half their time trying to get money? Well, uh, first of all, that's not, that's not the way it works. I mean, most religious charities that I know of, and I know the Methodist, uh, we are always there to help people. You know, if you're stranded in a city, go to any Methodist church, and we will uh, provide for you an airplane ticket, cab fare to the airport. We always help people, and we never ask for anything in return. And that's part of the way uh, God works. You know, God puts people on earth to help other people. Uh, I do a favor for you, and hopefully you'll do it for somebody else. Uh, but you have to... Well, there's a limited amount of money that public schools have. And I say if we're going to be spending money in schools, which I do believe we should be doing, uh, the money should first go to those who do the right things, not the uh, wrong things. What do you mean, the uh, uh, right things? Like you graduate without having a maternity dress on. Like you don't have any babies being cared for at a high school daycare center. 
You know, if that's the only place that that poor mother, uh, or, or poor father for that matter, uh, can go to, to obtain an education and where their child is well taken care of and fed, and cuddled. Look, if private organizations like the Methodist Church want to take care of these responsibilities, I got no problem with that. I don't want it coming out of my pocket. Well, you know what? You know what? Uh, you, I, I always look to Jesus and at, at what he did. And, you know, he loved everybody, the rich and the poor. But you know that the, what will kill us is your, and I'm a, I don't mean your, your, but I mean your ideas and social Darwinism in general that day. I'm here for myself. I'm the bigger. I'm not here for myself. I'm here for people who work hard and try to do the right things. I am happy to help out students who come from poor backgrounds, who want to work hard, get good grades, who are not out getting knocked up. Uh, they're getting good grades, and they just can't get over the hump, and they'd like to go to college. I'm all about helping people like that. I don't want to help people who do the wrong things. Has anybody ever opened a door for you or given you or, you know, well, well if they did, if they did, I certainly didn't knock up any teenagers when I was a teenager myself. Well, I was not you know, arrested. You know I didn't drop out of school. I went to school. I got as good a grades as I could get. I worked hard. Uh, and if I ever got any help, it's because I deserved it. But, Tom, have you ever gone into a poor neighborhood? And see the conditions where, where some of these kids that are... Sir, pregnant. sir, I grew up in the South Bronx. You don't have to tell me about what poor neighborhoods are like. My family was dirt poor when I was a child, and we lived in an $80 a month apartment that was recently cited in the New York Daily News. This building, 1504 Sheridan Avenue in the Bronx, New York, was cited as the... Uh, worst of all apartment buildings in New York City in terms of violations, health code violations. I grew up in the worst of the worst. So uh, believe me, I do know what a poor neighborhood is like. And, and that is why I have this attitude. I work my way out of a poor neighborhood by, by not getting people pregnant, by not doing drugs when I was a kid, by not becoming a drug addict or an alcoholic, and by not committing crimes. Let me tell you something. And you know, it is possible to do stop. those things when you grow up poor. It is possible. Well, listen, uh, let me let me just tell you something. It is possible. You know you know what, though? You have uh, a lot of, you know, when you went out of your neighborhood in New York City, you were white. You'll be white tomorrow. You know, a lot of these people don't have or and didn't have the same advantages that, that, that you What advantages that you, did I have? Well, let me tell you something. I had to drop out of college because I went. I had to drop out of college because I went broke. Well, if you, somebody invited you, you you could go in. There are some people, the, the the you know the blacks and the Hispanics, the people, the, you know the poor of our society, the people that Jesus told us to to care about and love. Those are the people that that really, really, really need your help. They don't need your excoriation. I, I don't. I. Uh, by the way, I don't happen to agree with that. But you're calling from Miami, where Hispanics are the majority. Uh, and by the way, most Hispanics I know are the hardest working people in America. Absolutely, they work. They work from dawn till dusk and way beyond into and, the, into and this is not a racial issue because uh, the vast majority of kids in public schools in Southern California are people of color and I'm all too happy to pay for their educations and help them to uh, go to college as long as they hold up their end of the bargain show up every day don't be on heroin or cocaine don't be selling drugs don't be gang banging and don't be impregnating people well, you know, that's one of the unfortunate things is, and unfortunately, is that a lot of these kids, a lot of the black kids in particular, uh, just don't have the father figure. You know, they need, they, you know, you have you ever been a big... Well, we also ever? have, uh, well, I've worked for Junior Achievement, too, Jim. Believe me, uh, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree here. I, I am well aware of what it's like to be poor. Okay, I, can I tell you something? Uh, something that a very uh, someone that I admire a lot, you know, St. Francis of Assisi said, you know, you're not going to be able to help a million people or a thousand people, but you know, if you take a, you take a young man or a young girl, a you know, young girl who's pregnant, and maybe you give her a scholarship if she does well in school, and you motivate her, and you know, for God's sakes, you know, get her out of that cycle so that her child will have a better life than than she does. You know, there are a lot of good people in this world, and I know that you're you're one of them, and you probably don't brag about what you do, you know, and, and I think, you know, but 
what I object to is, and, and you can understand this, is when you call a young girl who's 13 or 14 or 15 a swat, that's, that's such a derogatory term. It's an accurate term. It's not. It's a very mechanistic term because you're categorizing every pregnant girl as a slut. That's not... That's just not the way. Well, the I, will, I will. I will give exceptions to those who are molested by their parents or raped. Uh, other than that, well, you know, you, you know what? You've got to give these people a break. They're young people. There, but they again, have... you can only give so many people a break, and I think you have to have priorities. And if you only have so many resources to go around, don't you think the people who are doing the right things should get help first? And Do you want to know something? There, uh, I was listening to that girl in, in uh, from I believe Las Vegas, and I was appalled at her attitude. Of, you know, of people that, that probably did not have the privileges that she's had. You know, I, I people dislike when you just hear the word I, 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 I did. I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm in honors classes. I have a higher IQ. I paid for this. I paid for that. And a lot of these people just don't have those resources. A lot of these people can't even fill out uh, a simple uh, McDonald's application. But a lot of them happen to be very bright. They just haven't had the opportunities. You're a smart I haven't had the opportunities. I, you know, you got to admit, if some of these kids would stop partying and would sit and do their homework, uh, yeah, they would be able to fill out job applications. Uh, many of them uh, were busy uh, getting uh, going out and getting pregnant and staying out all night rather than sitting home and doing their homework. You know, the, the, the thing is, though, is, is that I, I really do believe that that, uh, you know, God is in control of this world, and I think that we have to be more humane to other people. I, I admit, listen, I admit that there are a lot of dangerous people out there. I admit that a lot of people waste their time, but I've also seen a lot of, you know, I went to college, I went to the university, I went to frat parties. I was a, a middle-class kid. And believe me, uh, I didn't see a lot of the poor kids, you know, go to frat parties or enjoy themselves the, the way that some of the middle class and upper middle class kids did. It's just that, you know, one day, as in my case, I saw the light. I said, you know, I'm wasting my life here. I don't want to, you know, don't want to continue to make $150,000 a year in a meaningless job. I want to help people. And and I think that the person who did who made me see that was was God. I think you know, and I think that one day I hope and I pray that you will find God and you'll. Well, find that's you. that's a whole other question. Hang on a second, Jim. David, what did you want to say to Jim? Jim, I hate to break it to you, man, but your whole story about uh, God, 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 and He creates and rules and everything around us. There's a phrase by a hip hop group called Wu Tang a long time ago called "Cream Cash Rules Everything Around Me." Unfortunately, in the society we live in nowadays. Right. Money runs the world, man. It's well, it's a sad thought. I, I praise Jesus. I love God. But in the world we live in today, now, cash rules everything, dude. The, it, the money, the, the world moves around it. Not just America. The world moves around it. And it, but the way, that's that's an excuse. That's what people have always said. If you go back to the 15th century, the very the wealthiest family, the Medici, was was said to rule uh, uh, Italy. You go back to the Middle Ages, the lords uh, and, and the kings uh, with wealth and land. I govern that. But you don't want that. Unfortunately, that though, Jim, we're not in the 1500s, and our population throughout the world has listen, more than a thousand percent increased. So, listen, unfortunately, listen. we have to stop worrying about the people that don't want to do anything for themselves. They, one way or the other, they're going to be impoverished. That's just the, that's the lifestyle they chose. Unfortunately, it'd be nice to break this cycle, but 99.9% .9 of these people do not want to break this cycle. They want to live off of my hard-earned money, Tom's hard-earned money, your hard-earned money. And we all look at it as like, give everybody a chance, give everybody a chance. But what about people like me? I tried well, damn hard, and because my parents made just a little too much money, but not enough money, I couldn't get into college. It's BS. I. We're out of time for this hour. David and Jim, I thank you. By the way, don't forget our website. It's blowmeuptom.com. It's blowmeuptom.com. If you need to listen to our show on the live stream on the Internet, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.